everyone this is ryan mahalik here and i'm really excited to show you guys a best of seven series against pewd btd after our best of five we had the other day where i beat him 3-1 he said that didn't really count and he said he wanted to beat me try hard best of seven and he wanted to unban cobra and engineer which i'm not really used to but we'll see how this goes so our first game was on offside and he went um engineer Engineer uh, Ninja Farm, so NFE, and then I went Dartling Bomb. Honestly, a pretty bad matchup for me. NFE is really good on offside, but we'll see if I can pull this one through. Him allowing Engineer and Cobra is really bad because I play, I play a lot of Koth, and in Koth those towers are banned. So I'm not really used to playing against those towers, but we'll kind of see how this plays out. And of course, offside is the starting map. It's pretty much the default starting map for all of um, series people play. So I go to 254 Eco. The reason I didn't go for, two, for 259 is because 254 gets you one more banana on round two. And I'm trying to get as much farms as possible since he is going to be playing a drain game with me. Since he has a very aggro strat. Round four comes. I just send him a few pinks. Maybe force some defense, and then he sends me pink, uh, pinks and blues. Just forces my powerful darts. I, I'm going to be able to afford my farm here at um, 1.30 game time to get my plantation. And he has his plantation as well. So nothing crazy so far. Round 6 comes. I go for my other farm, and then I send him some blacks just to force some defense. He sends me greens and blacks. It's not enough to force any defense. The, the reason I sent him blacks instead of going for defense there was because since I sent him blacks, he had to build up stuff instead of sending me more greens, in which case I would have to get up a cannon. So I'm able to go for my second farm there because I didn't have to get up my cannon. So I'm farming pretty well now. He sends me some yellows. I just get up a 0, zero cannon and I'm able to clean that up perfectly. So I'm pretty happy with how I've been playing this so far. I'm farming very well. He hasn't really been able to slow down my farms much. He goes for around 9 yellow rush. I just get up the frag bombs and then he stops. And yeah. Round 10, I send him some leads just because a cleansing foam isn't really super reliable against leads. So I'm hoping to sneak some through. And I just continue farming basically. He sends me Camelud round 12. I got my second Dartling over here. I've explained this in earlier videos, but you want your Dartling over here to kind of break down the Zebra and Black layers so your bomb can do more damage. Round 14. See, I have, I'm going to have enough money at the end of this round to go for my BIA pretty much, but I don't because um, I know he'll just punish me. I'm actually planning on going for around 16 BIA. So here he sends me a beefy uh, regrow lead and zebra rush. I really didn't want to boost against this, but I got up my dartlings a little bit late, and I end up having to boost, which is really bad for me, because I pretty much have to go for my BIA at the end of this round or I lose. So I end up still going for it, which honestly, I kind of had to. And then he sends me a really big lead a uh, rainbow and camo rainbow rush and it forces me to sell the BIA and go for pods, hydro rocket pods. So honestly boosting round 16 there or his round 15 rush was really bad because I ha couldn't really go for my BIA reliably. I go for a bank and a plantation here and then he sends me a moab. It's not bloom boost or anything and I have plenty of defense to defend it without boost so that's solid for sure. But at this point he is definitely outplaying me because he forced the BIA sell. Maybe in hindsight, I should have just went for um, a Republics instead of a BIA. Round 20, he actually sends me a Moab instead of a BFB, which is kind of interesting. I just go for a Moab Mauler, and then I'll sell the Moab Mauler and go for an Impact with that money. And it cleans up perfectly. But again, he's going to be able to drain me very well. He's has good farms and his strategy is good for that. I pretty much still have to go for my BIA here, which I know that's a greedy move, but 
I need the money late game with this strategy, so I pretty much have to do it. I already know a BFB is coming my way. I have to sell my plantation, get more maulers, and boost it. And I still don't have enough, so I have to sell my BIA again. Honestly, really sloppy play on my part. I say destroy to kind of fake out uh, Sabo, which kind of worked. But he's definitely draining me here, and I'm definitely getting outplayed. So, yeah, there's not much I can do here. I pretty much all out him once he sends me another BFB. He sabos it. I defend his BFB without boost, but yeah. I send him some camel leads here, send him another BFB, and then. What I should have done, honestly, is sent him a bunch of like camo regrow uh, rainbows at this point. I didn't really think of it. That probably would have been my last hope because he's gonna be able to defend this pretty easily. He just sends me some Moabs and then uh, camo regrow lead, camo regrow ceramics. But in all honesty, if I sent rainbows earlier, that might have been able to kill him. So that's game one to Pewd. Game two, my first losing map, and we're seeing inlets again. Honestly, my favorite map to play on. Uh, I'm really confident in my inlets game. And it looks like, there again, he's using Engineer, because he unbanned these towers because he knew he would want to use them, and I'm not used to facing them, so we'll see how this goes. Round two, I don't even eco at all. I just go for my plantation, because I already know... I already expected him to go Engineer, so I'm not going to try playing very aggro. Just trying to get up my BIA and that type of stuff. Round 4, he sends me some blues and then spaced pinks after it. Um, it doesn't really do much damage through my Grape Shot, so I just end up greeting for my Plantation. And then I'll get up another farm here round 6. He sends me some greens and blacks. I get up a faster shooting, and then I'll end up getting another 0-0 zero, zero boat. I send him some blacks to force his faster shooting, and then I'll balloon boost some on round 7 to try to force another 0-0 zero, zero boat on his side. So I am sending him some stuff just to force minimal defense, but as you can see by our ecos, he has sent me a lot more. And because of that, I will have a farm lead here. He sends me some yellows. Honestly, didn't need to get up that mortar. He barely sent me any. And then I sell my 0, zero boat to go for another farm. So since I was able to sell the boat, the mortar basically cost like $300. So it, even was, it wasn't even that expensive. Round 10, I send him some leads. Again, the cleansing foam is not super reliable, so that's the reason I do it. Round 11, he sends me a balloon boosted white rush. I didn't have money for a destroyer, and I didn't want to sell a farm, so I just ended up boosting. If he sends me an all-out round 13, I can just get up a big one and defend, so... I'm fine boosting that. I, I go for my farm with some money in my back pocket still. In case he sends me a rush, I'll just get up a destroyer. So that's kind of why I waited a little bit. And the reason why I don't go for another plantation here, and I end up going for just the Republic, is because I'll end up selling this later to go for a... Um, BIA on this 1-0 farm. So that's kind of why I don't want to upgrade all my farms to plantations. He sends me a really good rush of regrow leads um, and then some leads mixed in with around 16 AI. I don't want to boost this, so I end up going for two destroyers, which is honestly fine. I'll just get up my late BIA on round 17, and I'll have some Moab defense with these destroyers. So he sends me a Moab here, it's not Bloom Boost or anything, just some leads behind. I still have two spikes left, so I end up double spiking this Moab and I'm able to defend it with my current defense. He sends me a bunch of Zebras behind, so I just go for a second Mortar here and get that up to a, um, just 0-1 and that's an easy cleanup. So since he did not deny the BIA or anything and it's only forced one boost, I'm definitely in the driver's seat here for this game I think.
he sends me some leads with around 20 AI, and then some zebras and regrow leads behind. I go for a second mortar, and I'm going to get up to a balloon buster. And that cleans it up. Round 22, he goes for his facility. Uh, I just keep going for farms. Nothing crazy so far. And then round 23, he sends me a ZMG. I already expected that, that he would probably send me a ZMG, so I start spamming some boats up here, just to kind of break down that ZMG layer that I'm planning on boat pulling the Moabs that come out of it. And he ends up following with an all out. So at this point, I kind of have a messy defend, honestly. I didn't expect the all out. I go for a big one and then I boat pull some of the BFBs. And I honestly, I should have just went and boat pulled the ZMG BFBs as well, but I just end up going for a boosted defend with the aircraft carrier and, and mortar stall. So we'll see how this plays out. I keep stalling. I can't really counter him. I don't have money to, so I've just got to defend this. I end up actually leaking a little bit, which is kind of scary. But I'm able, able to outstall this rush and then um, get up some defense. And I just end up rushing him here with some BFBs. And I win this match, it looks like. So I honestly wasn't really expecting around 24 all out. So the defend was kind of was kind of ugly, but I'm happy to come away with that win. So now the series is 1-1, going to his losing map, which was, yes, it was um, Hot Tub. And he goes Cobra Bomb Mortar here. Cobra is a counter to Dartling, so that's probably why he went it. So we'll see if I can outplay him here, but it's a really hard matchup for me. Dartling's not very good against Cobra. Pretty much what I need to do is try to focus and get a BIA this game. That's what I'm thinking. So again, this is kind of like the same thing with um, when I face the Ninja Farm Edgy. I want to play really passive here. I send a 259 this time instead of 254 just to force the mortar. And then I'll get up my um, farm on round 3 and get 3 bananas from that. I kind of tank the leaks here and just go for my farm because I think... Farming hard is the priority here, and then I'll just get up my um, powerful darts after that. I don't really send him any pinks or anything, because they wouldn't really do much to his defense, and I'm just trying to focus on farms as much as possible here. However, I do send him some boosted blacks here. The reason being, it slows down his green rush, and it forces um, a Bernie stuff as well. I also get up my 0, zero mortar to kind of clean up those greens. So the dartling spot, honestly, probably would have been better where my cursor is, like around here, to shoot down this line against the blacks, because I am leaking a little bit to these constant blacks he's sending, just because the dartling spot isn't super great. Round 8 comes, he sends me a beefy yellow rush, so it forces my cluster. And then I'll just focus on farms until round 12 when um, I'm going to need camel lead detection. So round 10 comes, camo reroll leads is actually a very effective rush against cobra. The reason being, these cobras are all in strong, so what happens is the mortar will take out the lead layer, and these cobras won't target the blacks from that from that lead, they'll target the other leads behind it. So then they could just end up regrowing a ton. He knows this, so he ends up going for a frag bomb and that's enough to defend. But camo leads is a very good rush against Cobra because of their it kind of exploits their targeting. Round twelve, he sends me a camo lead. I go for my Bluntonium darts up here. Kind of the same reasoning as offside, this is a really good spot to break down the zebra and black layers so then the bomb can do as much work as possible. Round 13, I actually go for the bank, 
And the reason I go for a bank instead of a late BIA is because going for a BIA against Cobra is very dangerous as they can, uh, like, offensive push you or just really hard adjustment. So it's much safer to go for an early bank and then later just cash out your bank and go for a um, BIA with that money. Round 16 comes, we both end up sending each other a lead rush, and we both end up boosting against it. I honestly probably shouldn't even have sent that rush, it probably would just be better just to focus on defense and farms. So I start spamming some dartlings, I already know that a moab's coming and adjustment's coming, so that's what I'm preparing for. He sends me a moab, so I sell my um, farm, and end up going for some upgraded dartlings and as well as the upgrade cannon and that defends it. So I, I cash out my BI here and go for um the cash out my facility and go for the BIA here. And I'm able to save up enough money here to afford the um impact after selling a dartling to defend that Moab. So I'm definitely doing good here with my BIA play. I actually have more eco than him because of the BIA and blink I had earlier. So that's very solid. So I sell my impact here and go for a hydropods. The hydropods is really good against um, adjustment and have all these darlings down here to kind of break down the ceramic layer so the hydropods can work on the insides. I'm focusing on targeting my hydropods around this like bend by the water so then it can kind of, the explosion can kind of get the balloons around that whole bend. He sends me a BFB, so I end up cashing out my BIA, spamming some Moab Maulers, and I'm also going to go for an impact later after all these mobs are dead. I'll sell these Moab Maulers and go for an impact in that defense. So I still have one boost left, and it looks like he ends up all-outing out, all outing me. So I spam some Moab Maulers, get another impact, and then I'll get up a just a cluster bomb. And I'll end up boosting it. And that's a pretty easy to fend. I send him some mobs. He sends me camel ceramics. It's not really going to do anything against all my dartlings. But I just get up a laser cannon to be safe. And looks like game 3 goes to me. So it's 2-1 me right now. Going to his second losing map. So we'll see what it is. So I'm very happy with that game. Uh, winning against him on his losing map. And it looks like he chose mountain pass. So I'm not confident on this map at all. It's not in the King of the Hill map pool. I barely ever play it. But I, I try out this strategy with Eco on it, actually, which is very interesting. It's Dartling, Boomer, uh, Dart. And the reason this track can be good is because Dartling, Boomer is very popular on this map. And my Eco strat can defend BFBs while Dartling, Boomer cannot. So normally my game plan with this strat is I'll just wait till around 20 and send Dartling, Boomer a BFB and they'll die. But since he's going dart whiz, it looks like, um, I'll have to kind of switch up my game plan here. So I full eco here, and I pretty much target my dartling backwards near the end of the round to make the rounds last as long as possible so I can get as much eco as possible. At this point, I don't really know why he went for a second trip dart. He should have just went straight for a sport to defend my eco, but it kind of doesn't make sense to me, honestly. So I'm just full ecoing blues, pretty much trying to get as much eco as possible until round 8 or 9-ish, and then I'll have to start focusing on defense for around 13 rushes. So I'm pretty happy with my eco right now. I already have 513 in the middle of round 7, and for it being a short map, that's very solid eco. So I go for a dart uh, boomer up here. And if he sends me a yellow rush, I'm just fine against fine boosting against it because you don't really need that many boosts on this map since the, the, map, the games don't really last very long. And the reason I go for my boomer up here instead of the traditional spot down here is because I kind of like it to hit the balloons farther up on the map. In case he layers like leads and stuff, I want the boomer to be able to deal with the leads early. So I end up stopping at 587 eco and kind of start building up my defense to prepare for round 13 rushes.
Round 12, he sends me a camel lead. That was expected. I just get up a Bluntonium darts. And then round 13, he sends me some zebras. I end up perfectly affording my turbo, and I just turbo that. So he didn't boost beta boost or anything, which was his plan there, so that's definitely solid. I honestly just keep the turbo charge up and um, wait for the duration to of the cooldown to go away, so then if he sends me another rush, I'll just turbo it again. I layer in some pinks and uh, yellows, I mean whites and yellows in round 16 to try to force another boost, but he ends up just spamming some defense, so he's able to deal with that pretty solid. So he has two republics and about 500 less eco than me. So I honestly don't know who's getting more money at the moment. It's probably pretty close. Round 18, he doesn't send me a Moab because I still have a pretty decent amount of defense. But I have to be ready for round 20 BFBs. So my plan against BFBs, honestly, is obviously the dart. I want to spam darts and then get up the fan club. So as you can see, that is what I'm doing here. He sends me a BFB with leads behind it. So I have a pretty big misplay here. I actually sell my boomer. So then these leads are actually going to be pretty deadly since my Bluntonium darts is my only lead detection. I get up my fan club and try to get the boomer back, but I don't upgrade it enough and these leads are blocking everything right now. So I end up actually going down to this BFB because I boost late and the leads were blocking. I wouldn't have been able to defend that without boost, but I accidentally sold my boomer and that was definitely a misplay on my part. So the series is now 2-2. And we're going to Swan Lake. So it looks like we both go Boat Mortar here. He was kind of talking trash about my Boat Mortar earlier, saying it was an easy strat to play. So we'll see if it actually is that easy on this game. Swan Lake Boat Mortar is actually very hard to pull off. We both go for our boats here. I go for a farm, and he does as well, so pretty passive start. He sends me some blues. I honestly probably should have done the same because I leak a little bit to it and it doesn't really slow down his farms at all. Round four, I send him a few pinks, just enough to force the faster shooting and then he does the same and he constant sends, which honestly with boat mortar, I don't think that's the move. I think it's just better to play passive and focus on farms. So here I'm planning on grading for my, another farm on round 6 instead of just going for another boat right away, which I do. He sends me greens and bloom boosts some blacks over it, except it doesn't do much damage to me because I'm getting the income back from the farms, and I'm able to get up my second grape shot pretty early against them. I just send him some blacks as well to force a second grape shot, and then I'll focus on farms once again. So he does have a life lead, but I'm fine with that because I still have two spikes left and... I've got decent farms. He sends me a yellow rush in round 8. I just get up my mortar and that's enough to defend with minimal leaks. Again, I don't go for another farm here. Um, you can't go for a third farm really with this strategy. You need to be able to defend whites. And I think he actually was a little bit too greedy, so I send him a white rush and then boost some whites over it and it forces him to boost. I just get up my destroyer preemptively in case he rushes me. He sends me a zebra rush with whites. I just get up another grape shot and with some mortar micro that defends pretty well. So I sell that grape shot that I just built up here to go for a um, factory, because I know he's not really going to rush me again. Round 16, if he rushes me, my plan is just to boost it, because I still have three boosts left, and I send him a rush on round 16 as well, and he boosts it. So at this point, I'm up a boost. He has about 40 more eco, but I'm also up farms, so I think I'm definitely in a better place right now. He sends me round 18 Moab. I was expecting it, so I actually preemptively spike it. And this is a really sketchy defend on this map, but I go for three destroyers 
and with some mortar micro, it actually it barely defends. So that was a really sketchy defend, but I was didn't want to boost it at all since he didn't then boost it. He sends me another one here in round 19. And honestly, not the best defend on my part. The AI kind of messes me up. I end up having the spam destroyers and still boosting. I'm not sure if I had to boost there, but I wanted to play it safe. I send him one as well, and he spams destroyers to defend it. I still have an out farm here, but he ends up actually all outing me. So my plan now is just to stall this as long as possible and get my boost back. So I send him one Moab here, Bloom boosted. That's not even enough to kill him. I should have sent him two with leads behind, but so he actually defends that. So it's actually gonna be really close. I'm still stalling as long as possible. I send him another Moab, pretty late. I should have sent him it earlier, but we'll see if I can outstall them. It's gonna be really close. He sends me some camel pinks and it looks like I outstall them and I win. That was a really close game. And now I'm up 3-2 in the series. So his losing map was Inkblot. Again, this map's not in the cost pool because of how sided it is. He knew he has advantage. The boomer spots on the left side are so much better. So it's kind of it's kind of dumb that he can pick this map, honestly, because left side is such a big advantage, but we'll see how this goes. Boat Boomer is also really like the only strat viable. I guess you can go Dartling Boomer, but still, you have the same problem with the Boomer spots on the right side. So we both send, um, I should have sent a 259, I don't really know the eco numbers on this map. And he has a pretty smart rush here, he sends me blues and then pinks. And he's able to just greed for his farm because of it, because I have to get up my faster shooting while sending him constant pinks, and he can just kind of greed it out. So round five, six, I send him some blocks and actually end up greeting for my plantation. And then he sends me a beefy green rush with blocks behind it. And it forces some leaks. I honestly probably, sh I honestly should have boosted here because again, this map doesn't last very long and you don't really need all three boosts. So I should have boosted to preserve some leaks, but I just got up the second grape shot and tanked the leaks. But I have a nice hot farm now because of it. I go for my second farm, he sends me a yellow rush. I don't even boost it because he barely sent me any. And I honestly don't even know the best boomer spot on this map, but this spot's okay. His spot is just so much better. It's really unfair. He sends me a boosted round 11 rush. I'm able to defend it with my current defense. Some, some leaks, but not that many. We both send a camel lead. He actually sold his farm. So he has no farms now. He sent me a Zebra Rush. I sold one of my farms to go for a Destroyer. I'm able to defend that. I send him a Zebra Rush. He sells his cannon ship and goes for a Turbo Charge. So I send him some Camel Leads behind that. Looks like he spikes them, so I send some more. And he goes for his cannon ship. I send him another Zebra Rush with uh, yells over it. He boosts. So then I'm planning on all outing him really soon, which I should have done so much earlier. I, I waited too long to all out him, and because my boomer spot's bad, the boomer on boost doesn't defend very well, and I actually die first. I had that game in the bag after I faded the boost, and I didn't all out him quick enough, so I ended up losing that. So that was unlucky. In our last map, current score is 3-3, everything on the line, and I choose Pinball Wizard. Pinball Wizard Eco. Here we go. He's going DFA. anti soul round one. I don't let them get the farm money up. And yeah, that's kind of how you start have to start it with eco. You don't want them to get the round one farm money. Then I just constant send reds. I go straight for my blade shooter, not with the faster shooting. I talked about this in an earlier video. You don't want to get the faster shooting to kind of greed your eco a little bit more, unless they force it. He plays this the right way, going straight for the sport. Instead of trip dart spamming, because the spot's much better against group e grouped eco, which is the only thing I'm really going to be sending him.
So my goal here is um, I kind of stop ecoing around the middle of round 8, and my goal is to get around 620 eco. That's normally what I get. And then after round 8, I have to save up for a ring of fire and a camo detection village. Round 6, after I stop run out of money for eco, I send him some block, spaced blocks boosted, and that ends up forcing another trip dart. So that's a very solid, small rush for me that doesn't even slow down my eco. So that's kind of why I did it. Round 8, I send them some yellows, and then I stop ecoing right here and start saving up for defense. I always like to go for my village before the Ring of Fire because it the 10% cheaper, it really helps the price on the Ring of Fire. So that's the order you want to do it in. Then of course round 10 I go for my Ring of Fire. I leak a little bit, but it's okay. And then I get up my Camel Detection Village in the middle of this round. So there's a slight miscalculation, I'm about $100 off of my Camel Detection Village. So I get up a little bit late and I'm going to have some leaks here. I'm able to afford a ninja as well to kind of preserve the leaks, and I'll just keep the ninja for um, ceramic rounds as well. So in a recent video of mine, I died to camel ceramics from um, Brian Chess, so I'm keep I have that in the back of my mind. So I make sure to get up my um, two one ninja before during round fifteen to kind of deal with those if he sends it, so I don't get it up late. He goes for his round 15 BIA. I send them a boosted white rush on round 16. I was hoping to force a boost. I forced a little bit of defense, which is still solid in my eyes. I'm only going to really need one balloon boost for late game with this strategy, so I'm fine burning two of them with eco balloons early on. Round 18 comes. He sends me a Moab, so I get up my Bloon Jitsu Ninja with um, Distraction along with, along with another Ninja, which will become a 2-2 two, two Ninja with another Distraction. And I'm able to defend that without boost, targeting targeting them from strong to first. I continue ecoing as hard as possible. I pretty much will continue this eco until round 21 or so, and then I'll um, save up for my monkey town along with the OMG defense. Again, I've said this in previous videos, but you always want to eco with whites until you get about 2200 eco because whites will force more defense than pinks will. Then around 2200 eco, whites um, don't send fast enough, so you want to switch to grouped pinks. So I start pl placing a few more ninjas here. Um, just to kind of prepare for ZMGs, I want to have the defense down beforehand and then after I get up three ninjas or so I'll save up for my monkey town so I go for my monkey town here and I just continue maxi going if he ends up all outing me I'll have money to defend I'll just sell my monkey town I'll stall I'll have my ninjas down I'll boost them and then I can just spam a bunch of blade mouse stroms for the BFB and mob layers the monkey town's kind of um backup money for defense in a way as well, so it's pretty nice. So what I did there was I had ninjas placed on the right side of this village, which were kind of anti-stalling the rounds. So I actually end up selling them later on and placing them on the left side so then the rounds aren't getting anti-stalled as much, so then I can eco even harder. Nothing really interesting going on here. He sold his jug for a second, so I sent, it, sent him like two groups of leads, but he just got it back up, so I didn't do anything. And then Moab's come, he'll just fan club. I'm just going to continue ecoing as hard as possible until around 30, and then I have to focus on defense for ZMG rushes. 
he starts ecoing, which is kind of interesting here, I guess. It might be the move, because um, he's not going to rush me till later on. And pretty much the rule with eco is um, the eco makes its money back after two and a half minutes. So if he's going to wait two and a half minutes to rush me, then it's worth it for him to eco, since he already has max farms. So I stop at 5400 eco, and then I start spamming ninjas for my um, ZMG defense. I think I've said this in previous videos as well, but I get up my um, range boost village down here to kind of boost the range of my village with the ability, so then it can affect even more ninjas. I don't worry about wasting money on perma sabos yet, because I'd rather just sabo once he starts sending me to save money, as much money as possible, so I can spam more ninjas in the meantime. So it looks like he starts sending me on round 33. As you can see, I get a perma sabo up, spam some more ninjas, and then I'll start using the village ability soon. Right now I'm just spamming ninjas, spamming the village ability, and I'll start using my three boosts. This is why you want to keep your boosts for late game. They work really well in tandem with the village ability. Honestly, wish I would have spammed some more ninjas, because these ZMGs are really strong and they're starting to get by a little bit. So round 35 comes, and at this point I'm like, okay, I don't think I'm going to be able to defend all of these ZMGs. So I counter him with four, fat, four ZMGs, and I don't think he has enough money to defend these in all honesty. So what I need to do is pretty much um, stall these and take out the starting ones and hope, hope that he dies to my rush. Because I know I'm not going to be able to defend it. So I'm stalling using my village ability, waiting to get my last boost back. I get my last boost back, use the village ability with it. I'm taking everything out, the stall runs out, I use the stall again. It's getting really close on his side. Oh, this is going to come down to the wire. I use the village ability one more time. And it looks like he can't defend, and I end up winning. Really close games against Pewd. Maybe, eventually, they're going to respect cosplayers a little bit more after this one. Because I've beaten him 3-1, and then a try-hard best of 7 that he challenged me to, I beat him 4-3. So, I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.